Hi there. Hey Gary. Hi to all my subscribers, unsubscribers, trolls, bots, lurkers alike. How you going? Maybe you're having a fantastic day wherever you are in the world watching. I need to share this of uh, cognitive dissonance. Everywhere I look I see it. Robbie, the robot, was told to shoot a gun at a man in the movie Forbidden Planet. His electronic brain caused a short circuit. The creator programmed it to never harm a human. So the conflict paralyzed it. Humans are often presented with opposing thoughts as well. But our brains have developed a way of resolving conflict through a process called cognitive dissonance. We are taught, like Robbie, that murder is forbidden. But what about war? And many anti-abortionists support the death penalty. Disruptive behavior is all around us. So how exactly does it work? In short, the theory of cognitive dissonance states that when you have two opposite ideas or allergies, at the same time, you will act on one of those cause the least distortion to your ego. According to Wikipedia, cognitive dissonance is an unpleasant sensation caused by holding two contradictory ideas at the same time. The ideas or the cognitions in question may be attitudes and beliefs as well as behavioural awareness. Theory of cognitive dissonance provides purposes that people have made motivational drive to reduce the dissonance by changing their attitudes, beliefs, behaviours or justifying or rationalising their attitudes, beliefs and behaviours. The theory of cognitive dissonance is one of the most influential and widely studied theories in psychology. Dissonance normally occurs when a person perceives a logical inconsistency between their cognitions. This happens when one idea implies the opposite of another. For example, belief in animal rights could be interpreted as inconsistent when eating meat or wearing skins. Realising that the contradiction leads to dissonance, which can be experienced as anxiety, guilt, shame, anger, shame, stress, and other negative emotional states. When people's ideas are consistent with each other, they're in a state of harmony or agreement. If the cognitions are related, they are classified as irrelevant to each other and do not lead to dissonance. Let me give you some examples. There are lots of schemes and scammers trying to get your money these days. Almost every day I get dozens of emails from people like Abba Muzala from Nigeria who just got my email address and wants me to help him transfer $70 million to my bank in exchange for a 10% commission. Wow, I could use some $7 million. All you need is my bank account number and a PIN code. He is even willing to transfer the full amount to my bank account because he trusts me so much. I continue to receive variations of the scheme every day. Why? Because this works. Somewhere in the world there's a victim who will have cognitive dissonance. Bernie Madoff. On a more sophisticated scale, Bernie Madoff scammed hundreds of wealthy people out of an estimated 50 mil billion by manipulating the same mental process. And we could have continued to do so had he not bragged about it to his children who delivered it. So how is it people are able to convince others to have access to the funds or willingly give them their cash? For one more example, you're walking down a busy street, deep thought. Suddenly a smiling woman jumps out of her place, stands in front of him, puts a flower in his hand. Hello, dear. It's a wonderful day today. I want you to have this flower, she says. Now, you have a beautiful flower in your hand. It's a very nice gift and it seems friendly. She starts walking with you, telling you that you have a nice kind eyes you say she realized right away that you're special and she always wants to meet you you forget your previous thoughts about work bills or your own life suddenly it feels good appreciated elevated then the same kind of tone of voice and a bright smile she says i know that you're a good person and that you can help me by giving me something for the beautiful flower right what goes on inside your head at that moment is cognitive dissonance. Dissonance or disharmony comes from two contradictory ideas or decision parts. A path tells you that you should say no thank you and keep walking, perhaps returning the flower and feeling insulted, even if it means that she will dis be disappointed in you. The other way tells him that she has made him feel good and has earned his friendship and a couple of dollars. She hasn't been kind and doesn't want to ruin the, be ruin the belief relationship she was formed. Heck! I should probably even give her a flower back so she could use it on the next victim. Which decision will do the least damage to your ego? In cognitive dissonance theory, the results of these opposing paths of thoughts will be the one that requires the least emotional stress. Most victims will shell out something instead of feeling like they're being mean or disrespectful to someone who has made them feel so good. 
In the case of the Nigerian philanthropist Abdul Mazula, it is often less stressful to believe that you are a lucky chosen beneficiary than to believe that you are one of the thousands of emails to whom this offer has been sent. Later, after the bank account has been cleared, most people realise that they should have known better and puzzled by their own vulnerability. Many are so ashamed that they do not report the crime to authorities. Psychologists refer to this vulnerability as a voluntary suspension of disbelief, where one can easily see the potential manipulations and wrongdoings of its perpetrator, but because they've already made some prior commitment in accordance with this, it is easier to continue than to back down. Madoff investors knew that at 10 to 12 percent annual return on investment, especially in the current bear market, was impossible. Something dishonest or illegal had to be going on. But because they had made work so hard, but because they had been made to work so hard to let him make their money, often begging him to please allow them to invest millions of dollars, they had made the psychological investment that hooks in cognitive dissonance. After that, it was more stressful to admit it than towards the Ponzi scheme, than to simply avoid worrying about it. The small Ponzi scheme is a fraudulent investment create operation that involves a payment of interest to investors on their own invested or money of the new investors. The scam consists of a process which Profits obtained from the first investors are generated thanks to the money contributed by themselves or by the new investors who are deceived by the prom promises of obtaining, in some cases, large profits. System only works if a number of new victims grows. So basically, you, you have one person that joins up, that person pays money, and then another person comes along, and that person pays money, and the person that just paid money goes to the last person that paid money. It just, it just, it, it, it's like the way they print money. In Fessinger and Carl Smith's classic 1959 experiment, students were asked to perform boring and tedious tasks, like turning the pegs on a quarter turn over and over again. Tasks were designed to generate a strong and negative attitude. After an hour of work of these tasks, the participants were asked to pursue another subject who was actually an accomplice, and that the boring and monotonous tasks that the subject had just finished were really interesting and engaging. Some participants were paid $20 for the favour, another group was paid $1, and a control group was not asked to perform the favour. We asked to rate the boring tasks at the conclusion of the study. Those in the $1 group rated them more positively than those in the $20 groups and control groups. This was explained by Fraser and Carl Smith as proof of cognitive dissonance. The researchers theorised that people experienced dissonance between the contradictory con cognitions. I told someone the homework was interesting and I actually found it boring. When only one dollar was paid, the students were forced to internalize the attitude that they were led to express because they had no other justification. Those in the twenty dollar condition, however, had the obvious external justification for their behaviour, thus experienced less dissidents. Are you beginning to understand how this works now? Falling for a dime, falling for a dollar, cognitive distance has been used to control large groups of larger populations as well. In World War Two there was a famous campaign where citizens were asked to donate their old pots and pans, supposedly to melt it down and make tanks, ammunition, warplanes. The highly efficient connection of psychological investment initiated solidarity and nationalism for a war effort. Of course, all those pots and pans ended up buried in landfills. Here is an example from today. When the Western United States invaded Afghanistan, former President Bush was on television asking families to donate what do they can to help school children in Afghanistan who needed paper and pencils. Thousands of school children collected coins in the classrooms across the country and sent donations to the White House. Funds ended up being put into some vague account that never did what it was donated to do, but the investment was enough to win support for the dissident war in the dark land for vague reasons. Sometimes, as in the tragic collapse of the the reversal, is done in us. In this way, the entire nation can be made to feel like they have sacrificed something and they must choose the path of war for peace, forgetting about the, or even that, not responsible. I once belonged to, in New Mexico, that collected oil for the, to send the two. They also invested church funds with and Halliburton. Cognitive dissonance in marketing. In advertising, there is a theory that the consumer may use a particular product because he or she believes in advertising for that product, which claims that the product is the most effective of its kind in the work that you do. The consumer can then see the competitor's ad that appears to be conclusively proved that the competitor's product is better. This creates dissonance. The consumer now has to alleviate the uncomfortable feeling that the dissonance causes, and often by changing products. The theory acts as a double-edged sword, however, 
because while advertisers want to create dissidents and non-consumers of their products, they do not want to create it for those who do use their products. This is why advertisers use logos on things like NASCAR and sports arenas. They want to make it true to their brand. They will create a mistrust when you see the same product, even in a seemingly better product with different and uh, unfamiliar brand. Cognitive dissonance occurs most often after purchasing expensive items such as a car. Consumer who is experiencing cognitive dissonance after they purchase it may attempt to return the product or may collect p positive information about it to justify their choice. If the buyer cannot justify the purchase, he or she will also be less likely to buy that brand again. High priced durable goods advertisers who say that half of their advertising is done to reassure consumers that they made the right choice when buying their product. Some good uses of cognitive dissonance cognitive. Therapists use this technique to change the behaviour misbehavior and decisions. This technique is called a sort of yes. Getting the patient to ag agree to addiction treatment or initiate behavioral is difficult. There is often a fundamental head baiting between patient and people trying to help. Uh, it must be head butting. I never heard of head baiting. Maybe head butting. Head butting like you're banging your two heads together. Breakthrough is achieved when the therapist deliberately initiates a series of statements which the patient can agree. After reportedly agreeing with the therapist on a multitude of small decisions, the patient begins to feel good, and the therapist allows the patient to invest in a positive relationship. Then, skillfully, the therapist introduces a critical decision. So, don't you think it's really time to go to rehab? Faced with the possibility of agreeing or offending the therapist, the patient then often follows the Yes, that's that. The above example is very effective because the patient not only agrees to change the bad behavior, but is immediately rewarded for continued self, positive self-esteem and good feeling. Cognitive dissonance requires some skill to work. The cognitive concept doesn't always work, especially if it's poorly executed. I once went to buy a car, and after selecting a possible make and model, I found myself sitting in a small room as a salesman, haggling over a price. At one point, he asked for my driver's license or a credit card and said if it was... It was a gesture, so I was going to trust him. And the moment I said to myself, no way, I left. For many clients, it's a simple fact that would be enough to form a psychological investment with the dealer, who could then use this to manipulate and close the sale. It might be more difficult for the customer to demand a driver's license or credit card and walk out of the office than to sit there and be intimidated until they sign the contract, sales contract. Eliminating cognitive dissonance. There are several ways that people will try to overcome and cognitive dissonance. One is to ignore or eliminate dissonant insights. Pretending ice cream isn't bad for me. I can have my cake and eat it too, so to speak. Ignoring dissonant cognition allows us to do things we might otherwise see as bad or inappropriate. <laughs> Another way to overcome cognitive dissonance is by altering the importance or lack of certain knowledge by deciding that ice cream is very good, I can't do without it, or that weight loss is not as important, I look good anyway, the dissonance problem can be lessened. If one of the dissonant conditions outweighs the other in importance, the mind has less difficulty coping with the dissonance, and the result means that I can eat my ice cream and not feel bad about it. Another way that people react to cognitive dissonance is by adding or creating new knowledge, by creating or emphasizing new conditions. I can overwhelm the fact that no, no ice cream is bad for my weight loss. For example, I can emphasize new con cognitions like I can exercise three times a week, or I need calcium and dairy products, or I had a little dinner, and so on. These new knowledge allows the decrease of dissonance, since now you'll have multiple condi conditions that say ice cream is good, and only one that says I should not eat it. Finally, perhaps the most important way to people deal with cognitive dissonance is to avoid it in the first place. If someone is presented with information that is dissonant from what they already know, the easiest way to deal with this new information is to ignore it, refuse it, accept it, or simply avoid that type of information in general. So a new study says ice cream can make you feel fatter than previously thought would be easily addressing it by ignoring it. Also, future problems can be prevented by simply avoiding that kind of information, by simply refusing to read ice cream studies, health magazines, etc. Cognitive dissonance is all around us. We live in a world full of contradictions. Children are killed in Gaza in the name of peace. Feminists wear makeup, short skirts and high heels. Conservatives like Al Gore fly around in fuel efficient private jets and anti-gay Christians soak their feet in public toilets. Oh, Those opposing ideologies are somehow resolved. Somewhere, 
deep within our human psyche with cognitive dissonance. <laughs> uh, thanks. <laughs> Bye.